blowing But I can weather the storm What do I care how much it may storm I've got my love to keep me warm <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Amelia, good evening. Sitting here alone on Christmas Eve like a poor old maid. Really? Hmm. Oh, lovely, look. Oh, you know, it worries me to see you this way. All alone in a cafe and on Christmas Eve too. Hmm. It makes me feel as I did when I saw a bridal party in a parish restaurant. Thank you. The bride reading the newspaper whilst the groom played billiards with the witnesses. Mm, well, I thought, with such a beginning, what a sequel and what an ending. He played billiards with the witnesses on his wedding evening and she read the newspaper. <laughs> well, that's neither here nor there. I tell you what, Amelia, thank you. I believe you would have done better to have kept him. Yes, really. Remember, I was the first one to say you should forgive him. Remember? Hmm? Then you would have been married and had a home by now. Hmm. Oh, Amelia, remember that Christmas in the country? How happy you were with your fiancé's parents and how you enjoyed the happiness of their home. Thank you. Yet you longed for the theatre. Well, dear, home is best of all next to the theatre. And of course, children, you understand. Mm. That you don't understand. Ah, let me show you what I bought for my little piglets. Look here, see. For Liza. <laughs> Just delightful. Oh, and of course, for little Harry. A pop gun. Look, see, Amelia. <laughs> Were you frightened? Do you think I should like to shoot you? My soul, hmm. Well, I don't believe you thought that. Well, of course, if you would wanted to shoot me, that wouldn't surprise me. Because I came in your way and I know that you can never forget. Well, I was quite innocent, really. Really, I was. I didn't do that. Amelia. You still believe I intrigued you out of the theatre? Well, I didn't, even if you do think so. Well, it's all on whether I say so or not, for you still believe it was I. Mm. Let me show you what I bought for my old man. Slippers. <laughs> See, with tulips on them. Ah, how I can't bear tulips. Mm, but he must have them on everything. Yes, see what little feet Bob has. And you ought to see how elegantly he walks in them. You've never seen him in slippers, have you? Look here, see. This is he when he's peed. He stamps his feet like this. <laughs> Damn that cook. She can never learn how to make coffee. And those idiots haven't trimmed the hedges straight. Then he wears out his soles. And his little feet freeze. How cold it is. And those fools can never learn how to keep the fire burning. And then he comes home and has to hunt for his slippers. Which Marie, of course, has neatly tucked under the chaise long. Ah, oh, well, it's a sin to sit here and make fun of one's husband. He's a pretty good little husband. You ought to have such a husband, Amelia. Well. Amelia.
Are you laughing, Gabrielia? <laughs> Are you? Hmm? I know he's true to me because he told me. Thank you. Because he told me so himself. I know that. And because when I came back from my tour of Norway, that shameless Frederica came and wanted to elope with him. Ha! <laughs> Can you imagine anything so infamous? I'd have scratched her eyes out as she'd come to see him when I was home. Well, it's good that Bob spoke of it himself and didn't reach me through idle gossip. Frederica wasn't the only one, would you believe? I don't know why, but women are crazy about my husband. They must know he's well connected in the theatre. Perhaps you were there yourself, Amelia, and tried to influence him. Hmm? I don't trust you any too much, but I do know he's not concerned about you. And you hold a grudge against him. Oh, Amelia, really. Come to visit us this evening. Show that you're not angry with us. Or not angry with me at any rate. I don't know why, but it's so uncomfortable to have you an enemy. Possibly because I came in your way or... Well, I really don't know just why. Our relationship has been so peculiar. You know, when I first saw you, I was so afraid of you. So afraid I couldn't even look you in the face. Still, I came and went and always found myself near you. I couldn't risk being your enemy, so I became your friend. But there was always a discordant note whenever you came to our home because I saw that my husband couldn't bear you. And that was as annoying to me as an ill-fitting gown. I tried all I could to make him friendly towards you. But before he consented, you announced your engagement. And then came a violent friendship. So that in a twinkling, it appeared you'd only dare show your real feelings when you were betrothed. And how was it later? Hmm? I didn't get jealous. How wonderful. And I remember when you were Betty's godmother. I made Bob kiss you. He did it. And you were so confused. I didn't notice it then, thought about it later, never thought about it before now. And why are you silent? You haven't said a word this whole time, but have let me go on talking. You have sat there and your eyes loosened out to me, all these thoughts like raw silk in their cocoon. Thoughts. Suspicious thoughts. Let's see. Why did you break your engagement? Hmm? And why do you so seldom come to our home these days? And why won't you visit us tonight? Amelia. <laughs> oh, you don't have to say anything. I comprehend it all myself, and because, and because, and because, yes, yes. <laughs> Everything is all so clear to me now. <laughs> so that's it. Hmm? Hmm? 
That's why I had to buy slippers with tulips on them. Because you adore tulips, which I hate. We go to the mountains during the summer because you don't like the sea air. That's why my son's name is Harry, because that was your father's name. That's why I wear your colours, read your authors, drink your beverages and eat your pet dishes. <laughs> this wine. <laughs> so that's why. <laughs> it's fearful. Just fearful when I think of it. Everything. Everything came from you to me. Even your passions. Your soul crept into mine like a worm into an apple and ate and ate and grubbed and grubbed until there was nothing left but the rind within. I wanted to fly from you, but I couldn't. You moved like a snake and enchanted me with those black eyes. <laughs> I lay there with feet bound together in water, swam mightily with my hands. The harder I struggled, the deeper I worked myself under until I sank to the bottom where you lay like a giant crab, ready to catch hold of me with your claws. And I just lay there. How I hate you. Hate you. Hate you. You. You just sit there and keep silent, peacefully, indifferently, indifferent to whether the moon waxes or wanes, whether it's Christmas or New Year, whether others are happy or unhappy, without the ability to hate or to love, as composed as a stork by a mouse hole. You can't make conquest yourself, Amelia. You can't even keep a man's love. But you can steal away that love from others. Here you sit in your little corner. <laughs> Do you know, they have named a mousetrap after you, yes and read your newspapers in order to see if anything has happened to anyone, or who's had a run of bad luck, or who's left the theatre. But here you sit and review your work, calculating your mischief as a pilot does his course, collecting your tribute. Oh, poor Amelia. Do you know, I'm really sorry for you, yes, because you are unhappy, unhappy like a wounded animal, and spiteful because you are wounded. I can't be angry with you, Amelia, dear, because you come out of the small end of the horn. And yes, that affair with Bob, well, I don't care about that. What is that to me, after all? What is that to me, after all? And if I did learn to drink wine from you or from somebody else, what difference does it make? And if you taught me how to dress taunt mule, well, that only makes me more attractive to my husband. And you lost what I won. Yes, to sum it up, dear, 
I believe you have lost him. But it was certainly your intent that I should go my own road, do as you did, and regret as you now regret. Well, I don't do that, Amelia. And let's see. We won't be mean, will we? Possibly, darling. All in all, at this moment, I am really the stronger. You get nothing from me, but you gave me much. And now I appear like a thief to you. And you wake up to find I possess what you have lost. And how was it, Amelia, that everything in your hands was worthless and sterile? You can hold no man's love with your passions and your tulips as I can. You can't learn housekeeping from your authors as I have done. And you have no little Harry to cherish, even if that was your father's name. And why do you keep silent, silent, silent? You believe that is strength. But perhaps it's because you have nothing to say. Because you don't think anything. And now, I'll go home. Thank you. And take the tulips with me, your tulips. You can't learn from another, you can't bend. Therefore, you will be broken like a dry stalk, and I won't be. Thank you, Amelia, for all your good lessons. Thank you, because you taught me how to love my husband. And now, I'll go home and love him. Thank you. <clears throat> Merry Christmas, Amelia. Merry Christmas, dear. Just watch those.